Yeah, so anyway, stimulation. Yeah, you were talking about how you had fast food. Yep, I had delicious Portillo's hot dogs. I had a uh, hot Italian steak, uh, whatever, cheese. It it wasn't even have, does it have cheese? I don't even know, but they dip it in uh, its own juices. Wow. And then they put peppers on it. It's pretty good. It sounds like it could be pretty good. It was, it was. And then I... It sounds like we're going to get to hear it digest the whole cast. That's right. <laughs> You're going to feel... <laughs> Go it. down slowly. <laughs> You're going to feel it through the microphone. Mm-hmm. My digestion. Um, and then I was telling Cody that, uh, like, I didn't really want to drink, but then whenever the guy asked if I wanted to drink, my uh, my brain tricked me and was like, you want stimulants. Get get tea. Get tea. Yeah, you want tea. Yeah. And so I said tea, and so now I'm stimulated yeah we don't usually uh i usually like to have um i I like to be hungry for this cast yeah i prefer not eating Mm -hmm. but since it was uh improvised it was uh and you came here within like (laughs) racing speed (laughs) and we both happened to have eaten 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 Um, we eaten yeah we eaten uh it's legal word okay you can consult shakespeare really yeah i'm sure (laughs) let me fucking dredge his body out from wherever the fuck he's buried just use some stone yeah (laughs) yeah just as chat gpt um no yeah so this is gonna be our digestion cast so everything was exciting and now it's this is the this is the lull. We have to have a bad cast yeah, to, to then yeah. contrast the next cast, That's which right. is going to be us just mainlining heroin. <laughs> would that be... <laughs> I think that's low energy. You're right. Yeah. What, you... what would be a high... Cocaine cast. There you go. Yeah. The coke cast. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get the plants. I'm going <laughs> to... Uh, I'm going to fucking ship them in from South America, and we're going to take the leaves, grind them up, Yep. I don't. I honestly don't know. I think. It, do you have to run them through like a chemical process? I think you do. It, yeah, I think you yeah. got to like distill them or oh, something. purify them or. Well, I think you can make like a liquid that is unusable that then can be like. You add something to make it into a powder, and then yeah. it's like you're done. I'm just gonna source a 1920s Coca Cola from go. eBay and then drink <laughs> that with you on the cast. <laughs> Jesus. I... Dude, we should have a, a, a magic mushroom cast. I was uh, actually talking with one of my buddies about doing that pretty soon. I was going to do it this week before the cast, actually. Wow. Yeah, I just, I didn't, the timing didn't line up because I know I'm going to be incapacitated for like 10 to 15 hours. Damn. And, and I didn't want to. Uh, Are you going to do it here? No. Fuck no. That would be a terrible idea, <laughs> no. I think. It'll be in nature if I do decide to do it. Yeah. But he has a bunch of uh, bars, chocolate bars of oh, it, so I yeah. was going to do one with him. I'll that's figure fun. out a time. I'm not sure yet. That's a, that's a good time. I did uh, end up doing not a sure. fast earlier in the week because my goal was to fast, have oh. nothing in my system, <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then do it. That's the first food you yeah. digest. I think uh, you die. I don't think so. Um, <laughs> the, the body's pretty resilient. Uh <laughs> Especially considering what they put in fast food nowadays. <laughs> but no, dude, uh, you got to get yourself a Portillo's yeah. and Taco Bell meal. Yeah, that's what I got to do. <laughs> um, so yeah, I made it. Uh, this is my longest yet. I think I did about eighty hours of fasting. Oh, and then you just ate now? No, no. Oh, it was okay. earlier in the week. Okay, okay. okay. I, I think I I fasted from Saturday to like uh, Tuesday or something like that. Whatever the time it yeah. was. But uh, I feel great. That was amazing. That's good. I honestly, I, I'm really aiming for the seven days. That's what I want to do. So yeah. I'm working my way up there. First, it was like a two day. Then I did like my first official three day. And this was longer than a three day. It feels longer than the last one for some reason. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was great. Damn. People need to fast more. That's not, <laughs> I don't know. I like it. It's, yeah. it's a lot of fun for me. I have a lot of focus. So I think that's what I really got out of it. I see. I mean, like... I. <clears throat> I think I've told you, like, I just feel terrible and shaky, mm. usually. Yeah. So. It's yeah. the Herxheimer reaction from the parasites dying off in your that's, body. That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it was just good. I, I would I would have thought the reverse was possible, where, like, if you're hungry, you can't think on, you can't think about anything for a mm-hmm. long period of time or whatever, but yeah. no, it, I, I definitely can completely focus 
on something because I you're as in essence trying to fight against the hunger in some ways. I mean, it only comes and goes. It's like you know a couple growling and then it's gone. But yeah. For me, anyways, I'm sure it's different for others. Yeah, I think uh, I think for me, it's just like that. I think my brain knows that I could just get some food, hmm. and so it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing this for? And hmm. it just makes it like hard to. Yeah. actually think and do stuff but. it is yeah there, it is a fight against will because mm -hmm. I, I was like okay well i have food going bad that i need to cook yeah and and after three days like i didn't want to waste the money for that stuff so i was like okay well i'll fast more in the future and yeah. the three days felt great though so i was gotcha. very happy with it it's nice i uh this is gonna be it, i i don't i guess i'm gonna mention it because i played it uh, one of my gaming groups was like, oh, we're doing a tournament for Warhammer 40k. Uh, they're playing a, they played a version called Grimdark yeah, uh, Fantasy. Yeah, before. Yeah, and, uh, they were like, do you want to play? Like, we'll come pick you up, drive the hour to come get you, bring you there, and uh -huh. play it. And I was like, yeah, sure. So, <laughs> I went through the ringer, and just, <laughs> I've never played, uh, grimdark at all but uh -huh. played like 12 hours for that <laughs> day i learned the game Jesus. in that setting and then played like it was literally just you know uh, trial by fire basically <laughs> uh but i i only lost the first game that i was uh the tutorial where Damn. i was being taught and then i won i think yeah i think i won the other three games and tied one so we played five games total you each won the tournament no, I did not. You're the champion. No. The, per the person that taught me won every one of his games, so oh. he won. I was uh, I was close to second. I got third because the person that got second, it came down to point difference because of our tie game. Yeah. So uh, it was really fun. It was a blast. And honestly, I learned a lot about that um, game that I'm going to use going forward for my stuff, too, which was very uh, rewarding. Well, isn't that one like a hero-based Warhammer where you have like one guy who has more abilities? No, it, it is basically just Warhammer, but the rules are like more simplified and oh, okay. uh, they don't like their design practice is uh, essentially less greedy. Basically, their goal is to uh, not only do they have their own, they um, they work with Warhammer models. So like all of their factions, you can just use your pre-existing Warhammer models, but yeah. they also on their Patreon create uh, 3D models that you can print with the 3D printer Sick. that you can buy for each of the factions, um, their own models, which are way cheaper because I think you can buy like a bundle of all mm -hmm. their models for like each faction for like a hundred bucks or something like that. Yeah. Uh, if not for uh, like $10 for the Patreon thing every so much, like every couple months they do like a release for that. But then they also have paper printouts, which I'm assuming you could do for Warhammer too, but you can just paper print it out and put it in like a stand and use that. Or you can just use whatever tokens you have on hand. So I thought all those are like really awesome ways to get people into what otherwise would be a very expensive hobby. Oh yeah. Obviously, um, if you're going to go the 3D printed route, uh, having a 3D printer is more expensive. But <sighs> people that already have a 3D printer on Etsy, you can just like give them the files or it's, most of them yeah. have the files and they print them for you. So, and that's way cheaper than, you know, doing the Warhammer shit, which, you know, I get they have a higher quality material and they got to make money and, yeah. you know, it's whatever. Some of the stuff just... Seems greedy to me. I don't know. Injection molding? Yeah. Do you know how cheap it is to injection mold all <laughs> those... Yeah. Yeah. It's no. probably <laughs> it's probably pretty cheap. I mean, I get it. They got a production line, right? They yeah, can only print so many. Off. They got to, you know, they got to pay artists to do that stuff. It's just some of the models seem way too much. I don't yeah. know. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not about it. You so know. whatever. Yeah. But that was fun. That was good. I got, I got some gaming in. I, it was last weekend. I, I fasted uh, after the meal that we had in the morning uh, for that. Nice. So it was just a, a hunger-fueled battle of attrition. <laughs> Every uh, Actually, my favorite part in the whole game was that uh, I had one of the guys there make me a list because I didn't know what the fuck was good. And he gave me this unit called the Burrower which had a surprise attack. So typically what happens is, is you have like squads of units and some of them you can keep in reserve uh -huh. uh, or like ambush where basically that means is that at a later turn you can opt to bring them in. Mm -hmm. And if you do, they spawn nine inches away from an enemy unit. 
Yeah. Uh, but the burrower, his surprise attack ability is one inch away. <laughs> and so what ended up happening is people were trying to like position themselves in anticipation of the burrower coming nine inches, uh-huh. but instead would just pop up literally right next to them, <laughs> deal a surprise attack of damage, wipe out a bunch of their units, <laughs> and then I would like proceed the next turn attacking, usually because I had less units activated the prior turn. But yeah. that was very fun. I had a lot of fun with it. Damn. And they went hard. They had three fucking tables set up, all these little models on it. It was like cliffs and cathedrals. And Jesus. I was like, man, dude, this is a way to go through the ringer and play this. Yeah. Like, this is high. I mean, this is like a, I feel official. I feel like I've been playing this my whole life. <laughs> I made the the most troll group that I'm going to try to run for the next tournament. I was debating between just running three burrowers, which would have been <laughs> <laughs> fucking funny. I might still do that. Or there's like a faction that doesn't seem to be played because they have like no units called the Jesters, but uh-huh. their abilities are retarded. <laughs> that like all they do is like run forward. They they have like dodge mechanics, so they never get hit, and then their hits are really easy, and they melee the shit out of you. <laughs> so I was like, I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, I just. I might print those guys off for the next one. But anyways, yeah, there's some gaming fun I had recently. It was a blast. Damn. Damn. See, like, I just played the new Zelda. Oh, how was that? Yeah, have you liked it? It's pretty good. I mean, I haven't been able to play it a ton, but uh, from what I have played, I... The thing is, like, when it first came out, like, the Breath of the Wild, right? The thing I really liked about it was, like, you can look at the map and you go, like, I think I want to go over there and, like, just go unlock this area, go explore, whatever, and it just always leads to something. Like, there's never, like, it never feels like you're wasting time, like, climbing a mountain or anything. Mm -hmm. So, like, um, in this one, it's a a continuation of that plus more, and so it's just like, oh, wow, I could spend another 100 and whatever hours on this just wandering <laughs> doing whatever and so it, it it's pretty cool yeah that is awesome i actually i was gonna say the last time i'd ever felt like that was with fallout 3 but that's not true when i got into my genshin impact phase <laughs> i played the shit out of really? that game yeah Jesus. it was for like a month like i i don't think i i haven't touched it <laughs> since but the the part i liked about it because that game is often um breath of uh, the wild yeah it's compared to breath of the wild um, but in that game, there isn't really like much things to find in the weird areas, but they do have this system. I can't remember what it was called, but they're like these orange floating, like gem looking things that were like collectibles essentially. Yeah. And whenever you would go to areas, you could like run around and collect them and pick them up. And I like, I just did that yeah. for hours. I would just <laughs> run. I, and it was it's honestly the worst. I think one of the worst ways to play games like that is the phone. It yeah, is not and that's fun. what you're doing. Yeah, and that's what I was doing for hours, just staring down, like <laughs> with my thumbs, just uh, the phone heating up like it's gonna burn a hole through my hand as it like maximizes the processor usage just to render anime weeb shit Jesus. for seven hours straight. <laughs> and then I'd be like, oh, I need to do my dailies, but the dailies for that game take like hours. Like every time you begin. And it would be like, okay, yeah, you gotta, you have to like tap all these people and you gotta go to all these areas. And the air, the map is so big, it would take forever to get to point A to point B. Yeah. And then you gotta attack shit, which takes forever. Killing mm-hmm. stuff isn't fast, even if you're good. At least <laughs> I felt like I was good. So that was funny. Jesus. That game was very interesting. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you like the new Breath of the Wild. That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely like the open world stuff. You can really get lost in an open world for quite a while. Oh, yeah. Well, it's just especially that one like i don't even like story that much and I, the what the thing i like about the zelda like at least the last two zeldas is it's like the story's there and like you can go do that but like i don't even <clears throat> once i like unlock the map a little bit like i just i just skip all the story i don't even do any of it yeah i i often find myself sometimes like having a difficulty investing in the story oh, yeah. i i don't know what it is it depends on the game and it depends on how much time i spend on it yeah but you know, whatever. Yeah, well, so, like, so, like, game stories, okay? Mm. The ones that I like are, like, ones that are weird, but, like, um, the game is, like, somewhat focused on, like, Undertale. Mm. Like, I like the story of Undertale. I enjoyed actually, like, talking to the characters, whereas 99.9% of the time, I don't really care to do that. Yeah. You know, so. I almost feel like there's a, there's an innate, um, underlying sense when you can tell something has like an immense amount of like 
human effort into it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's often the things that'll like peer through even in moments when you don't want to care about the story, but it'll like latch on and start scratching at you. And you're like, Oh man, I need to pay attention to this. (laughs) Like this is riveting. Like I'm invested. Yeah. Yeah. So different times I, I feel like that. Like, sometimes it just feels like they phone it in, they're just queuing up ChatGPT, and they're like, if you were, like, an anime mage, <laughs> and you got isekai to another world, and that world, uh, you know, you had a harem of men uh, that were of all walks of life, but all of them hot as fuck. Uh, uh-huh. just, <laughs> like, you're like, ah, oh, this fucking plot again. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. I've read this again. No. Yes. What is it with these people and this escapism? <laughs> Why can't they just live in reality, dude? Yeah, what's what's wrong with these people? I don't know. It's like their eyes... Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's like their eyes? Yeah. 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 <laughs> it's fine. We don't need to be... We don't have to be that type of cast. I just... I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> dude. All right. So, oh, 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 okay, 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 okay. Yeah, you can really tell the food digestion's happening, because my brain's like a slug. Yeah, is it? Is it? Is it slugging around? It's you slugging. feel that slime trail behind like, your butt? Oh, yeah. You scoot around this cast, <laughs> clamoring it, for some sort of topic? Do you know what it actually is? Is that the, the portillos, the grease that they slop on the sandwich? Yeah. That, I can feel that, like, moving over my brain. Oh, yeah. Right? It's like fucking horse DNA. Yeah. Like like, coursing through your veins. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm your like, body's what? like, man, this shit feels good right now, but it's not going to feel good coming out. No. What? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway. Yeah. Uh, so, like, all right, all right, all right. So, I have a series of things that happened to me over the last all couple right. days. Yeah, let's hear about them. So, I had a dream that I remembered. Oh. All let's right. Hear it. Now, to to preface this uh this this last couple days i've been working on two projects at once again because i i i'm a glutton for pain <laughs> um and so i've been working on these two two separate projects i've i've been lucky enough to where it's like one is slow enough to where i can just full attention for like a day or two on the other one so um the dream that i had was i was riding a bike Okay, I was riding a bike between two houses, okay, and I was on a paved road, and I look off in the distance, and there's, like, a tornado, and, like, I'm just, like, going to the other house, I'm like, huh, I wasn't really panicked, didn't really care too much that the tornado was there, I was like, eh, whatever, um, and I passed by a guy, I'm like, oh, you don't want to get sucked up by that thing, and he's like, yeah, and then, like, kept going, so, like, I get to one of the houses, and, like, I look out the window, and the tornado is, like, going crazy. Like, it's, like, <clears throat> like, despawning, respawning, like, reforming, and then, like, twisting and making weird angles and stuff. I'm like, well, I better get back. And so I go back to the, like, I just ride my bike to the other house. And then the dream ends. So, you know, pretty abstract, but kind of obvious, right? I'm working on two separate projects, and there's a bunch of chaos in the background. So, I mean, like, I don't know. I kind of figured that one out right away. But this morning like the morning that i woke up from that dream i was like in a i was just in a pit of depression i don't even know i don't know why like all of a sudden i just wake up and i'm like i damn i i don't want to exist this was yesterday Mm -hmm. i just didn't want to do anything um i forced myself to like you know obviously go to work and um i went home and like mowed the lawn and and all that stuff but like it took till like later in the evening like seven o'clock for me to like oh wait okay the world isn't terrible anymore i don't know how all this magically happened but uh i thought it was pretty interesting yeah that does sound very interesting i have heard the concept of like your dreams and the unconscious balancing your consciousness Mm -hmm. so like if you go to bed and you're like you know maybe even particularly like really happy or something it could balance by showing you something negative so that you're like normal in the morning or like I don't know. Did you feel the night before? Or what did you feel like you thought about before you went to bed? Hey. I was stressed out. I was stressed. Cause like, yeah, yeah. Because I got, um, I, I have back taxes for the IRS from 2021. Really? That I have to pay. Yeah. I uh, forgot to submit my, um, uh, I did like a lot of uh, trading mm. of stocks. And so I didn't submit those. And the IRS was like, hey, 
we found it. And so, like, I owe the money now. So I'm like, oh, I got to figure this garbage out. So there was, like, a bunch of stuff on my mind, which adds to the tornado and the chaoticness mm-hmm. of it, like, despawning and respawning and mm-hmm. doing whatever. So, you know. Uh, I think I figured that out almost immediately. <laughs> yeah, once you, once you, like, I feel like once you... uh give your dreams the credence some of them come through pretty easily oh yeah you're like oh yeah well that makes complete sense and then you get one where like you're being constantly swallowed by like a gold ox statue or something you're like i don't really know what the fuck that means but like is that what you recently that that wasn't recent i I was like a month ago i was like what the fuck does this dream mean i was like i'm a blood mage but like i keep getting swallowed by this giant golden ox and then there's like this imprisonment thing like i Actually, now that I talk about it more, I guess I'm I'm understanding it. But <laughs> there, <laughs> it's coming to me. <laughs> Wait a second, it all yeah. makes sense. Yeah, when I think about the ox, I think of anthrosophy, and in anthrosophy, there's like this concept of like the ox being a representative symbol for like the metabolic system, and the metabolic system being like unconscious because like they kind of just like sit there and digest, and there's like that. Anyways, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there, there are things coming to me. I'm getting it. This like <laughs> trap. The idea of being trapped, swallowed, eaten. The thing, the like, consuming. The idea of you know when you're being consumed or when you're consuming things, like the digestion happens. It's unconscious, it's, which also relates to like you know the present, but also the past. And then there's the future, and whatever the case. Is it ever possible that like you've dug too deep before? I think that happens all the time. Yeah. Yeah, I like when I, dude, I was, I thought the other day, actually, I just thought this last night, I was getting ready to go to bed. It was uh, past my bedtime and I'm sitting there thinking, man, Einstein seems like he was a hoax. (laughs) 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 And I was like, this is a really weird thought to have at 1am in the morning. And then I remembered that I like skimmed this book that was like 3000 pages long uh of like Einstein being a fraud. (laughs) <laughs> and I was like, man, I really need to read that again, or like parts of it, because I, I was like, I, th- my intuition's telling me to open it up. Yeah. So like after searching for a bit on my computer, I was like, oh, I remember where I put it, and I opened it up, and I started reading it, and then, uh, and then I was like, why am I reading this before bed? <laughs> 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 I was like maybe he was just a fucking fake. Yeah. And he just plagiarized all of his shit. But why does it need? Why do I need to read about this now? Yeah. <laughs> Your brain's like I require that knowledge. <laughs> yeah. My brain's like you have to digest this before you go to bed. Like this is necessary. <laughs> like what? I don't even remember where I fucking read the book or how I got it. I just have the file, and I couldn't find it from Googling it. I just had it on my computer. Jeez. So, yeah, sometimes I do think I go too far. <laughs> I just, I, my brain's like, hey, you remember that thing we read? Now's the time to cash it in and <laughs> withdraw a little bit more. Like, I guess what I do, it's kind of like a programming thing, actually, now that I think about it. But you know that concept of, like, accessors in programming? It's basically like that you have like pointers to like all uh to like data types and stuff like that. Okay. I like go through and download like big packs of books and then I sift through them. I don't read them. I just yeah. skim them yeah, to yeah, get yeah. like a general like premise of like this is what this book is explaining to me. Yeah. And then I put it away and I don't look at it. <laughs> and then like months later my brain will be like that book needs to be opened again because there's a topic on here you have to consume (laughs) and i'm like okay (laughs) and i'll like open it up and then go to it like even i bought that like great books of the western world Uh and like i have a general idea what's in like a good amount of the books not all of them obviously because i haven't sat down and read them all but uh like i was i keep thinking about pantagruel for some reason and pantagruel is this story in that uh, it's like a book, a series of books where it's like two giants and it's like a parody story or something written from like a priest a long time ago <laughs> about like, the, and it's like a comedy or something. And my brain's like, you got to read that. Like this needs to happen. Just, yeah. And I, I keep like looking at the shelf and my brain every time is like, you got to pick up pants girl. <laughs> I'm like, okay, tomorrow I'm picking it up. Just stop for now. Okay. I don't know why this is necessary at this moment, but like, uh, even when I was, um, when I was at a uh, guy's weekend and camping, um, I was talking with one of my uh, cousins or whatever, dad's, whatever, doesn't matter. Yeah. I was talking with an older guy and he, um, and we were talking about books and I was asking him about stuff and he was talking about sci-fi books and he brought up Ender's Game, uh-huh. which is, I really liked. I read the first two books of Ender's Game. They were great. And then uh, I was thinking about other books and stuff and I was like, man, uh, 
I really remember liking Terry Pratchett's The Color of Magic, the first book of Discworld. And Discworld has like 40-something books, and it was so funny. The first book was fucking dropped it hilarious. Yeah. It was almost... It was probably better for me than um, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. And, and I read two of those books out of three. But um, I was thinking about that. And then I was like, well, there's kind of like a triumvirate thing. Because there's like the Discworld series. And then you have like Lord of the Rings. And then like I was thinking of like other fantasy things that are like kind of intertwined. And I thought of Earthsea. Which is a book that nobody really talked about, at least that much, I haven't seen. I've never even heard of yeah, it. Yeah, Earthsea is like another one of those like high fantasy books from the 70s that was really popular. And it's like one of the triumvirate things. And I asked him, like, is it something you've read? He's like, oh, no, but I recommend like dropping everything and reading Discworld if you could. And then the Earthsea <clears throat> thing stuck in my head and I was like, man, I need to figure out, like, I don't <laughs> even know what's in Earthsea, but I kind of want to know. And I picked up the first book, finished it in like four days. Jeez. I was like, holy shit, this book is so fucking good. <laughs> and it was a great because... The best part about it is that it uh, it worked with all of the stuff that I was currently, like, learning at this moment. Like, I was dealing with the concepts of, like, the shadow and, like, light and dark and, like, trying to integrate, like, the negative aspects of myself going forward to, like, be the person I want to be. And that whole story is about this guy who lets pride overtake him and ends up unleashing a horrifying spell where there's like a fucking shadow of himself chasing him around the world trying to kill him and he's constantly running away from it basically for most Uh of the book and i was like wow this story fits like really interestingly with everything that i'm like looking at and i'm reading and i'm doing because like the dichotomy of like light and dark and all of this like uh, idea of like harmony and balance and that uh, this Mandorla concept of like the Venn diagram with the al- almond in the middle, like trying to balance everything with like all of those symbols and everything were perfect in that book when I was reading it. I was like, wow, this is fucking awesome. As well as it's one of the fantasy books written by a woman as well, which is uh, n- not that it's like I haven't read a lot of books written by women. Most of the stuff I read is like written from men which is something my girlfriend criticizes me for um, (laughs) quite a bit. And I felt like even more uh, because I was learning about like the concept of the anima, like the feminine aspect of self and how you can integrate that uh, with your creativity in order to become more holistic with all the stuff I'm reading from young. And then even the dreams, the unconscious and the conscious aspect, like tying that together to better understand, like all of it fit like perfectly. And so that book was really great. I don't really know how I got here. Oh, I guess we were talking yeah. about, yeah, do we ever feel like, you know, you go too deep? Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> sometimes I feel like I go too deep. Yeah, every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes I feel like I gotta be shallow, just the tip, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just... <laughs> I needed a, a penis joke in there, okay? Oh, yeah, the yeah. last one didn't have we, any. We, it yeah. was too clean. Yeah, too it was clean. too clean. This one, I'm sorry, guys, we can't take it seriously. Tip. I'm digesting the tip. Oh. Je- uh. Beef tips for the boys. Beef tips. <laughs> 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 Do you, okay, so <laughs> I told the guys at work that I was going to Portillo's, and one of the guys was like, "Oh, that place is disgusting." I'm like, "Well, you don't want like a beef sandwich dipped in grease?" <laughs> He's like, "No, it's like jizz." I don't know why that is. <laughs> it's just like, "Hey, you wanted to mention it, dude? I get it." I did. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it was just funny that I literally was just talking about yeah. beef tips being. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. So no, that's good. Yeah, dude. You know how difficult it is to convince people that like there is good fat or good grease recently i just made a dish for a group of uh sweaty gamers when i was at the grimdark thing Uh uh-huh and uh i the guy picking me up he's like oh i want you to make that dish that you made when you were camping because it was really good i was like yeah okay so i picked up the stuff and it was basically like bacon eggs jalapenos or um rosemary turmeric and garlic that's basically the dish it's pretty simple and so we picked up the stuff for it and i'm cooking it and uh, I had him have, wor- he was working on a pan. Uh, we had two pans going. He was working on one for bacon and I was working on one for like eggs and stuff. Yeah. And he's like, oh, what do you want me to do with the bacon grease? I'm like, just f- put the eggs in it. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> you think I- we're going to pour that out? No. You're, st- <laughs> you're wasting money. <laughs> you- <laughs> like, no, stop. You troggy. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> now I've gotten that time and time again. Like my family, would, when we would go camping, they would take the bacon grease and pour it on the fire. Now I don't ever do that. I just always cook with the bacon just, grease. I yeah. put it on the side. I use it for later. Something like that. See, but sometimes though, all right, all right. Because like I, I, I made eggs the other day with bacon. I actually made like oh, oh wait a second. So what I did is in a pan, did the bacon. Yeah. Took the bacon out. I wipe out most of the grease. Cringe. Because it, here, I cringe. Still it. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cringe. 
Continue. This is too much. No, you're you're dumb. You, you okay? Have your head like you're a okay. Okay, maybe I had really fatty bacon. Maybe. No, my bacon's really fat. I get thick cut bacon. Yeah. Okay. All right. But I want to slurp that up. If I'm not <laughs> slurping the plate when I'm done, then the meal's not complete. <laughs> <laughs> you ever do that and then like afterwards like I, I don't know for me like i feel like my heart is like why'd you do that to me no so that does happen to me if i eat shitty food but not if i'm like cooking for myself and then adding in vegetables and stuff like i do get that acid reflux if i eat something that's deep fried not acid reflux it's tightness I get that sometimes when I eat shitty food. Yeah. Okay. Well, see, like, all right, so, but I'll get it if I, like, fry up bacon and, like you said, just, just crack the eggs right in there. If I do that, eh, if I, like, all I do is wipe out some of it. So I still have, like, a layer. Instead of using butter or whatever, just leave the grease. And then I, but anyway, what I did is I <laughs> took sliced turkey and I threw it in the pan yeah. after the bacon, cracked my eggs, scrambled up, threw them in there, and then put, like, a little bit of monster cheese on it oh that does sound pretty good oh yeah put that on some sourdough with mm. the bacon yeah see i i put a tablespoon of butter in before the bacon gets in <laughs> <laughs> and then i add the bacon on top because <laughs> uh, and, and i was reading this i think this was from one of those 1920s books from yeah. kellogg's or whatever i think so i don't remember but i read somewhere that like the brain is mainly comprised of fat yeah so I don't you know, think your brain actually is comprised of fat. No, it's mainly comprised of fat. Is it really? Yeah. That's interesting. I, I believe Can you burn that. your brain fat? I'm sure you could if you could uh, dislodge it from the skull. and. No, no, no. I'm saying like as calories. If your I don't brain know is mostly that. fat, right? I would, I would believe that your brain is protein. I mean, w no, because women's brains shrink when they're in pregnancy and stuff like that. What? Yeah, like Why? if 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 they don't have enough nutrients, it just draws and leaches from everything, oh, including everything. their body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. no, I'm pretty sure. Here, I can look it up. You, you gotta eat like it, talking about like pregnant women. They gotta eat like three thousand calories. You ever see how much calories uh, breastfeeding takes? The human brain is sixty percent fat. Oh, sick. Mostly fat. Nice. So eat your bacon grease. You <laughs> fuck. <laughs> but uh, so anyway, though, my you ever like see like how much calories like breastfeeding takes? Like, I guess it's, like, 3,000 calories a day for, like, a, a baby to, like, suckle on your teeth. That's pretty interesting. I've like, seen breast milk for sale on Craigslist. Organic. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's just burning fat. Yeah. Yeah, she's like, well, I just want to lose some weight. Just yeah. squeeze that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that was uh, something I read very interestingly in uh, Deep Nutrition, as they talk about the concept of, like, the ugly second child. Because, like, the second kid always comes out uglier than the first kid when you look at, like, celebrities. Okay. And that's because, like, uh, they believe it's because your body needs about three to four years to store up the nutrients required to have a child. And so the second kid, uh, because if you think about it, your whole life you're storing up nutrients for and when you have the first kid. Yeah. And then if you don't give any downtime, most people often will have, like, back-to-back -back pregnancies or within a year or something. Yeah. And then those kids are often, like, demonstrably uglier or, in in a sense, not ugly, uh, less symmetrical. Because symmetry is beauty. Um, I see. When it comes down to, like, gauging beauty yeah. and what people find beautiful, it's often mathematical in nature. And mm -hmm. so they're less symmetrical. They often have more health problems and different things and other, you know... What's interesting are... about that is that, like... Well, so, okay... Everything, like, if you look at something zoomed in, it's typically symmetrical. Like, if you look at a leaf, for instance, that looks very symmetrical, right? It's it's the same shape on both sides. But if you look at a bunch of trees from distance, it's always random. So, like, <clears throat> by me, like, sitting on top of a hill looking down onto a bunch of trees and I'm like, damn, that's kind of beautiful, is that... Is that a different kind of beauty? Well, you gotta you gotta think about it. Like the tree is only pulling up whatever nutrients it has access to. But I I wonder if it had access to the perfect amount of nutrients for itself, it would probably be maybe more a more symmetrical in nature than asymmetrical. Let's just say we had a field of beautiful trees. Yeah, but they're not planted exactly symmetrical of each other because it's random. It's nature, somewhat. I mean, there's chaos in there, <laughs> sure. Yeah, but. but it, I mean, the perfect, the best looking stuff when it comes to like, even like snowflakes, for example, they're mm -hmm. like symmetrical. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I I've think. seen a good snow, snowflake. Yeah, like when you see them zoomed in and stuff, oh, like yeah. they seem like they're symmetrical. Yeah, like or like they're perfect. made up of 
the golden ratio in some way. Yeah, isn't that weird how they do that? When you zoom in, it's like... Well, you ever look at, like, even, like, molecules. They kind of try to organize themselves symmetrically. So maybe down to microscopic levels we have, like... Which, uh, which I guess when you think about it, that goes into, like, that light and dark thing again. Like, positive-negative, because it's, like, the positive-negative, like, electrons and things like that. They gotta balance each other. Uh-huh. Yeah, so know. they have to have, like, perfect... It's like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you look at, like, the spacing for, like, an iron bar, the molecules mm. in, a, in a piece of iron, right? It's like... They're perfectly spaced, mm -hmm. right? And it's just that that's just what I, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, this is like I don't even know what we're we're talking about it, but we're talking about jizz. Yeah, we. Oh yeah, Grace, yeah. So anyway, fat. Yeah, I had my my uh, beef tip and uh, jizz sandwich. Yeah. Honestly, they should just dunk it in more grease, but the good grease. They do not. The, yeah, literally, they like it. It they have the the hot beef. They yeah, have the you know thinly sliced beef and all the juices that run off. They just dunk the sandwich in there Perfect. so like yeah you know <laughs> like the place i went to it might be it is fast food technically but i i want to say they actually do the like beef there i mean they definitely charge you as if they were yeah. making the beef it's it's a maybe it's so. a thing of belief you know you're paying to believe oh you're right they just want to yeah i don't know we could call them up <laughs> do you guys like make the beef there do you have like cows in the <laughs> do you, is it like <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 they're uh they're in the basement next to the aluminum magnet yeah um yeah we had they all have coiling bracelets on their hooves <laughs> <laughs> do you know do you know about aluminum magnets no do you know about aluminum i mean i know of aluminum okay i don't know if there's some like it's so like whenever like Whenever I'm at work or whatever, you know, you, you basically can tell someone that something doesn't exist whenever you tell them that it's in the basement next to the aluminum magnet or just tell them it's next to the oh, aluminum magnet. Oh, sorry, I got your joke. Because yeah. it's not... Because it's not possible. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, can't magnet... I, alu yeah, dude, yeah, I'm so dumb. I didn't get I know, it. You're I good. understand. I, I yeah. just... No, I was like, I was like, wait a second. I wasn't... I, like, my brain didn't even really hear you say aluminum. I just assumed metal. Magnet. Well, yeah. I was assuming metal, oh, okay. and I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, magnets are made of metal, yeah, 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 like, yeah. done. <laughs> I didn't even think about, like, I've never obviously seen an aluminum magnet, because that wouldn't make fucking sense. Yeah, but, like, no, it's just, like, uh, I, you no, know, but I don't think most people even think about it. No. You know what I mean? But because I work with metal all day, it's like, oh, oh, oh. yeah. Hey, I thought the... those, I thought those, uh, cigarettes you brought were real for a second last time. I'm pretty good at making yeah. illusions. Yeah, maybe I'm so. just gullible. <laughs> maybe that's why this podcast works <laughs> <laughs> i just have been fooling you this entire yeah, time this entire time yeah but anyway yeah dude some mountain biking you want to go mountain biking honestly no i don't really like mountain biking that much no you don't like like going fast on some wheels i like the idea of hiking yeah did you ever Barefoot. go rock climbing no i have not gone rock climbing oh, yet we were yeah. supposed to yeah. Now, now that I've been fasting, I feel both simultaneously weaker and stronger. So maybe, uh, maybe I'll have to try that at some point. Yeah. See, I I can't pick myself. I can pick myself up with my arms sometimes, but like not for very long. Mm -hmm. And like that's what rock climbing somewhat does. But I, I was thinking about this the other day. Rock climbing is weird because there's nothing in my life that I've ever had to do that I've. You sit back, you stare at like a wall, and you go like. I need to hit that, 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 and that, and I need to think about, like, body position. So it's like, okay, how do I reach for that one? I need to have my leg like this, and I gotta have, like, my foot over here, and my arm over here, and then I could reach for it. Like, I've never had to think spatially with my own body, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's always, like, with an object or, like, other things. So it's it's a very interesting challenge whenever you go, like, rock climbing, because it's, it's, you're like a beginner at like thinking about this and you're like i how you know that's a really yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> skill that you mentioned i don't think i've ever considered it like that yeah like even just this morning i was considering the concept of like rotating a 3d three-dimensional object for like one of the pro uh, projects that i was working on yeah and i was like struggling a little bit but then after i started doing it more i got it but i don't think i ever i have a reason to like think about my body moving in a yeah, yeah three-dimensional space like i never really think about how much of a reach i have and how much like strength i have if i reach max mm -hmm. right i have you don't have as much strength as if you're a little bit bent right so it's like yeah. 
trying to think about how you're going to position yourself on a wall is weird. <laughs> I have been uh, doing dead hangs and stuff, at least. That's like the one thing I still continue to do for exercise most frequently. Because I just, at some moment, I want to be prepared if I have to hang from something for a yeah. long period of time. You're ready. Yeah. I, just, I mean, what happens if somebody's chasing me off the edge of a roof or something? Yeah. And, then and I need to hold on. You jump off and you're like, oh, I got away. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> what if I go to withdraw my gold at the bank and I end up on the <laughs> fifth floor and I have the gold in my pocket, but I want to make it seem like I jumped off and then they're like, they look over the edge and they don't see me because I'm hanging. But yeah. like I'm wearing clothing that's like colored like the bank because I weeks prior you, you've I, been planning. Yeah, this. I've been taking pictures of the side Let's... face of the building <laughs> and printing out the texture maps. <laughs> and then I went on Redbubble and got those printed and pressed. Yeah. And they're full scale, like one to one yeah. of the bank's bricks you, in clothing form. You know exactly yeah. the yeah. position. And you need then I use. got a famous body painter to fill in the gaps on my skin. To paint so, the rest of me. How much money do they get from the heist, though? Yeah, so the heist itself, it's based on weight of gold and... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, like, but how much How much of a cut does the body painter get? Yeah, so the body painter, he only gets the money if I make it out. So he has to do a good job. Yeah, like, he's got to do... money? Yeah, so like, that depends on how much I can fit in my pockets, which is what I've been training for let's for just dead say hanging. A percentage. <laughs> yeah, so like <laughs> he gets an amount. So like if you think about the surface area of my body, right? We yeah. gotta do the math. Okay. So what we did was we got one of those like three D printers where they take pictures of your body. Okay. And then we scaled me down to like a one tenth replica. Uh -huh. And then we we started <laughs> taking the surface mapping uh iPhones. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then converted that into a 3D Blender program, yep. which we used to, like, texture map the, the square. <laughs> 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 and, then, and then after that, I figured out, oh, shit, I can't actually do that because I haven't read the latest manuals that were required oh, from wow. the guy that I worked with. So this guy told me that if I went into Google SketchUp, he has all the manuals yeah. <laughs> laid out in different pages from around the house. <laughs> And if you dig in between couch cushions four yeah. and five and pull the lever. Yeah, but when I got to the lever, I smelled something, and then instantly <laughs> I was teleported somewhere else. Wow. And then I was in a parking lot of Arby's, and a man was confronting me about the gold <laughs> in my pockets, because he smelled the metal that isn't magnets, but it's gold. Yeah. Yeah, and then I saw the pyramids <laughs> in the distance. I think I was in Egypt and it, Arby's. Well, if, if, you, if you ever smell that again, just reach for the aluminum magnet. Yeah. And once you have that in your hand, that'll repel any Arby's mm -hmm. customers. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I yeah. think it was horse meat in that basement you had. It was. Yeah. It was. You're right. Not yeah. cow meat. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I found that out. Or they're just growing it. <laughs> in well, little test vials. I I went to uh I went to the um the Planned Parenthood dumpster. Oh and yeah, I, and I picked out the stem cells and just splashed them on the wall yeah. just to see. Yeah, <laughs> what amalgamation yeah. I could grow. Yeah, I don't really understand why they keep going for those stem cells when I can just go outside and lift a root out of the ground and eat those. No, yeah, you want the the baby. Type. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, <laughs> speaking of eating baby stem cells, I uh. I watched this video about the importance of uh, dandelions and uh, how, like, over history we used to eat, like, a lot of dandelions oh, yeah. and stuff. And so I've been making dandelion tea the last it's couple good. of days. I've been foraging. It doesn't taste good at all. But sure? I feel like it's pretty... It's It seems like I am feel better Yeah. in different ways. Like, I've, I, I don't know. I had the fast. I had a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. But just going outside probably helps. Did you, like, just go to a random yard? And no, stuff? I went to my house. Okay, where yeah. you made sure it wasn't spring. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah and then I was a... picking them, and then yeah. I boiled them. I, I used to, my aunt used to make it, and we would, you'd get, like, a giant jug, like a sun um, sun tea jug, you mm. know what I'm talking about? So yeah. you'd get one of those, and, like, when I was a kid, my aunt would just, like, have us, like, go to a field, and we'd just sit there and pick dandelions. I remember the tea tasting good, though. Mm. That's yeah, I don't know if I'm just doing it wrong or what, but she it, it has a, a weird flavor. <laughs> yeah, I I only was doing the heads. I wasn't doing the rest of the stuff. Was, that's all we did, oh, okay. too, yeah. I don't know. I, I, maybe I gotta be... Maybe it's too late in the season. Maybe I gotta do it right when they first bloom. Who knows? I don't know. Yeah, maybe but, back in the day, they just taste better. Mm -hmm. Like, as I was drinking, I was like, okay, I like I forgot the taste is kind of bitter or whatever, but... Yeah. And then I also, add, like, I tried adding other random flowers I found just to see what would happen. Like, I identified things. I was like, okay, this, uh, like, I took pictures with my my iPhone, 
and it told me like what the plant is and yeah. i'm like yeah that looks similar enough it's got to be what that is yeah and then i just put it in the glass and i was like okay that flower looks cool and i smell it and i was like that smells appetizing and then yeah. i would just put that in the glass too there you go and then i just that's what i did i walked around my field and backyard and i pick random shit <laughs> and then i i was like I, cl- I took pictures of it and i was like this isn't toxic i'm like okay i'm gonna believe this app yeah yeah and i just put it in the in the container and i boiled it all up and drank it and yeah, I mean, I'm still alive, so yeah, I don't know what the effects of that were, <laughs> but I'm here. You made a concoction. That's yeah, for sure. I made something. So that's that's cool. I'm yeah, glad dude. that you uh... did. You eat the dandelions? Eat them? No, I just you... boiled them and oh, robbed the nutrients of them and sucked them down. Yeah, I don't know if you can actually eat the flower part, but I know you can pick the the. I think you can eat all of it. I'm pretty sure all of it is edible. Yeah, hey, dude, I hate. Okay, all right, like. I, at my house, right, I, I didn't spray for dandelions. I, I realized something. I really don't care if there's dandelions in my yard. I don't want it to be all dandelions, but if there's a few... <laughs> Honestly, I don't care if it's all dandelions, because now I know their purpose. I can They, they harness the sun's <clears throat> energy, and I can boil them and make slightly bitter tea. That's perfect. <laughs> there's no nothing I'd rather be doing. And I get sunlight when I'm doing it, so it's exactly. only positive. Yeah. I'm crawling around in the grass. Uh-huh. Yeah, just picking them. <laughs> Feeling the sunlight on my back, yeah, it. yeah, yeah. I get everything. Damn. No, see, so like, all right, yeah. But anyway, yeah. Living in a subdivision, people hate dandelions. They yeah, hate... They, people love their turf grass, dude. Yeah, they're, they're like, like, I want to live on a golf course my whole life. <laughs> That's this pretty much fake, it. illusory lawn that I... doesn't exist in nature. Yeah, I just want to have something that's so distant from real life. Please yeah. take me away from real life. Honestly, if I could just further. go outside and it be just like it was inside, like I want a carpet. I just want carpet everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> dude, I would love like a moss ground though. Moss is pretty soft. You ever step on moss? Yeah, I've stepped on moss. It depends on the moss, but yeah, most moss I've stepped on. That moss, yeah, is pretty. The moss that we're probably both thinking about. Yeah, that's the good. It's stuff. like the green, but like dark green, a little bit of blue. Yeah, it's like carpet. Yep. But like soft carpet, it's nature's like, carpet. Why didn't we use that as yeah. like a a thing? I mean, it's it doesn't stick to the ground very well, so I yeah. guess you know. I bet you can eat that. It's mostly dirt, <laughs> <laughs> so probably, but uh, at the same time, why? Probably not. Yeah. yeah. I imagine, I mean, I've seen people talk about that stuff. It doesn't seem like... Talk about you. What the moss? fuck are we doing? Where are we going? <laughs> 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 what else has happened in your life? <laughs> Give me a new topic. <laughs> no, I kind of wanted to go to... I'm grasping at fucking straws <laughs> for this shit. <laughs> no, I kind of want to talk about moss. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just feeling in a mossy mood. Fern, I love fern. Oh, I yeah. love thinking of it, this, we just do, we go we, <laughs> we completely go down the route of the fucking um, mountain goat ASMR podcast. <laughs> You're in a field eating moss, masticating slowly. <laughs> Masticate. Masticating is such a weird. It's a good word. It is. It sounds like fornicating, but it's with your mouth. It is, and doesn't involve another person. I mean, it could. Yeah, the French, French kissing with. No, I was thinking cannibalism, but... Oh, that <laughs> makes so much more sense. But, uh, yeah, I don't think you want to chew on somebody's tongue. No, dude. That would be kind of inappropriate, I think. Um, so, yeah, no, um, mountain bike. Yeah, I'm not a mountain biker. I know. You having dreams of it? No, no I wasn't even riding a mountain mo- I don't even know what kind of bike I was riding. But you know, I keep uh, I keep going down the, the 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 YouTube rabbit hole of mountain bikers, and I'm addicted. I'm a, I'm addicted to the rabbit hole of Rust players playing Rust. Wow. Yeah, I'm about to start my Rust channel, dude. You're about to start? Yeah, I'm gonna have to get a copy of Rust. Yeah. At some point, which is like forty bucks. Should I just Steam steal it from me? Yeah, maybe I will. There you go. Yeah, and then I'll because I I think yeah, I'm just gonna need to play it. I'm going to need to see what everybody's talking about. And then I'm going to need to never pick it up again. You'd probably like it because you have slightly different tastes than me. But I, it's like repellent for me. I, uh. I like the failure in it. That's what I like. I, it's okay. But I mean, like whenever you like join a server and there's just some like group of guys that like already have like max level stuff. And you're like, I, I don't know what I'm really doing here. You See, know. everybody, like, everybody I watch, this might be the most boring topic ever, but everybody I watch uh, has, like, a different strategy uh-huh. for how they play Rust. Like, there are guys that'll go in and they'll just, like, so everyone starts at prim, their primitive yeah. level, and then at, they're, like, 
they're useless. They have no skills, nothing upgraded on the server, whatever. Yeah. And each guy has a different thing. Like, I've noticed Wellen will, like, just run around until he can, uh, like, outsmart somebody, outplay them, kill them, or get killed, and then start, like, a revenge plot against them, basically. Yeah. And that's his whole narrative. Then there's this other guy named, like, Sebi K or whatever, where his only goal is to, like, roam around the map. Find like something that look that somebody misplaced a building, uh -huh. like and showed the soft side instead of the hard side facing out. Yeah. And then he spends like a fucking hour soft siding it with like picks until he breaks <laughs> into it and then takes that loot, basically. Yeah. And then there are other people that do other things, like people will set up uh this one guy I was watching, Dirt Rider, he'll go in, first thing he does is set up like a shitty trap base, yeah. and then he just traps people in there and kills them and takes their loot. <laughs> and, like Each person has like a different strap for yeah. how they play the game, and so that's what fascinates me about it, is you can go in with the strategy in mind and then just like, you yeah, know, yeah. develop, basically. I gotcha. See, yeah. like, that game used to be different, way different. Hmm. Like, it used to have zombies on it, and stuff like that. Really? Yeah, and it used to be like radiation and zombies, and you'd be like, oh, let me sneak around. I mean, they still have the NPCs and stuff that you can kill. Maybe those are the zombies? I don't know. They probably are, but I mean, like, it used to be a completely different game. Mm. Like, whenever I first played it, it was... I, I kind of like that more than what it's become. Mm. See, like, I, just... I love the, sh the dumb shit that they keep adding. Like, they add... They added, like, more vehicles, like a yeah. hot air balloon and stuff, and Helicopter. that's funny. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool. It's just, like, I look at it, and then I remember, like, how hard it is to, like, start. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, I think I'm all right. Yeah, maybe I'll just become a pro rush streamer. There you go. Maybe that's what I gotta do. Yeah, I get really good at, like, headshotting people with bows. And no, that. I'll never be good at that. Some some of these people have been insane. Yeah. They're like, dude, I watch them scope this stuff out, and I'm like, dude, if I get that good at shooting a virtual <laughs> bow in real life, I'm just, it's a waste of time. Yeah. I, I just, I'll just go pick up archery at that <laughs> point, because that'll be cooler. It would be. Oh, dude, my neighbor, his kid has been shooting his bow. Yeah. Like, you can tell, like, the dad doesn't know anything and stuff, and I'm like, wow, look at this kid with, like, maybe a five-pound bow, like, just, like, he's pulling it back all the way, and he shoots it, and the arrow goes, like, maybe from me to the wall, which is, like, I don't know, three feet. And I'm like, wow, he should really tune the bow so he could shoot the arrow faster. Then I look, and he's shoot, he's pointing it at me, but doesn't, like, realize I can see him, like, because he's, like, pointing through the trees. I'm like, yeah, no, I, I don't want to talk to this kid. <laughs> like, this kid just got on my shit list. Yeah. Well, you go get your compound bow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Point it at his face. I, you think this is funny? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, see how you like it. <laughs> <laughs> Slices directly yeah. through. He shoots at you, you just clench your abs, it fucking breaks. <laughs> My Chad bow move. Yeah. yeah. But you can just tell it, like, the dad knows nothing. Because, like, he was out there, like, just on his phone. The kid was, like, pointing a bow. Like, usually you don't point weapons at other people, right? Yeah. So, you, know, yeah, you gotta make a big deal about it that's something that like sticks in the kid's mind for the rest of his life right yeah yeah like dude i have this one pervasive memory from my childhood where like we found some shoes on the beach or something with my cousins and i and we were like trying to like figure out whose it was because there was nobody there and then there was like a wallet and purse and everything there so we're trying to figure out like the identity so that we could like give it to them or whatever yeah and then like some like older kids like ran up and were like what the fuck are you doing through our stuff and then like chased us down even though the these like were placed in kind of like an area that seemed like they were in like they were yeah not hidden but it seemed like you know somebody wasn't gonna come back for them it just yeah, they yeah, seemed yeah. random and so they chased us all the way back to my parents and they're like they just started like yelling at them like uh, these kids were rifling through our shit they took our shit or something like that and we're like, dude, we were just trying to figure out, you know. But obviously we're kids. You yeah. were like being a good child. Yeah, basically. And they were like, oh, I hate these kids. Yeah, so that sticks in my mind. I can never forget mm -hmm. that an angry guy's facing the word rifling. Rifling through my stuff. Wow. Yeah. It's and even though, yeah, even though it's not really an important memory. So yeah, that's what you gotta do. You gotta be like, <laughs> this kid is shooting the fucking bow at me. He's aiming at me. Make a fucking huge fuss about it. I'm trying to think, because, like, I know what you're talking about, but I can't remember any moments in my life that have actually stuck that good. Yeah. You know? Damn. You know what? Actually, I do have one. I have one that's actually kind of funny. I was, uh, I was a dumb child, and there was a shovel on the ground, and I was playing with, like, a Hot Wheels. I don't remember what age I was. I had to be young, though. And I, I grabbed the Hot Wheels, and I was, like, driving around, 
And then, like, I see the shovel on the ground. I'm like, oh, cool. I saw this once. And, like, I put the Hot Wheels on the, the non-spaded end of the shovel. And I went to go jump <sighs> on the bottom part of the shovel. Now, normally, if you stand out of the way, this is okay. Because mm-hmm. I wanted to fling the Hot Wheels. But I stood directly in front of it and just hit myself in the face. That's amazing. And I remember just moments before my uncle was like, no, no, Sam! And just like, <laughs> tried to stop me. <laughs> that's actually amazing. Yeah. <laughs> Do you so, feel like that set you up and impacted your life and since then or what? I, know, I knew since then to look out for levers that could hit me in the face. Yeah. You never step on anything that's slightly, you know, inclined at all. Exactly. Yeah. In fact, ramps, you're afraid of them. I, I fear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The fear of something <laughs> flinging up and hitting you between the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Ever since that point, I was more interested in simple machines, but yeah. also yeah. fear of. Do you feel like your eyes are closer together because of the impact of the hit? Or it, it very well yeah, could it be. Just <laughs> <laughs> scrunched your face <laughs> inwards. <laughs> Your skull adapted. Now you only <laughs> yeah. you only look like at an X cross. cross yeah. yeah. <laughs> I used to think that. Oh, this is a stupid thought I had as a child as well. Yeah, let's hear it. We can do this all day. I think because <laughs> like I used to think like <clears throat> the reason why your nose is here is so your eyes don't cross like beams. I thought like I I remember seeing like in a a, a, a science book like an eye and like a square. With, like, a projection. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, it shoots out, like, light or something. And Mm -hmm. that's how I see. So the reason why your nose is there is that way the beams don't cross at the wrong point. No, that's that's actually (laughs) true. No, that's true because uh, uh, you never want to have eyes cross beams with anyone, uh, with yourself. So what they do for mirrors is they put a special layer behind the mirror uh, that, uh, that, obscures your sight just enough so that the light you shoot from your eyes oh doesn't, yeah it yeah, doesn't blind you it doesn't blind you that makes it, so much it, more sense because if you were to look at your true mug uh-huh it, you, you would break down i mentally I, you wouldn't be able to would. handle it yeah damn yeah yeah and water automatically reflects refracts yeah, yeah. because it's wavy right yeah, yeah, it, yeah. it doesn't need to worry about those things we talked about- like that story of narcissus the guy it, he found it, a famous narcissus. greek pond that uh-huh. was completely still and flat uh-huh. and also wasn't like a liquid it was a solid oh. and when he looked at his reflection he never got up because he thought he was so beautiful damn yeah he must have been pretty hot yeah he probably was but you never want to look you know directly in your eyes I which is why you don't want the beams to cross i, I want to yeah. get nose removal surgery yeah just see what happens yeah make that a new fad <laughs> <laughs> yeah i crossed my beams and now yeah, I can see the future. Yeah, you don't you don't understand what happens till you cross beams. <laughs> you're just you're ignorant unless you cross your beams. Yeah, forget yeah. smelling eyes. <laughs> smelling is overrated. <laughs> yeah, I haven't sniffed in a while. Yeah, don't need to. Haven't had a need. Decided <laughs> to lop off the old nose. Wasn't really doing much work anymore. <laughs> Needed to pull its weight. Dude, I I couldn't even smell for the longest time. So I mean, yeah, I just I... stored in a box now. <laughs> gets dust just an old shoe box yeah like <laughs> along with your pokemon cards <laughs> i just split it up yeah i use it as a token sometimes <laughs> you know that like rock nose guy nose golem nose yeah. golem yeah, nose whatever. pass yeah nose pass I just, yeah. yeah whatever yeah so you know but anyway yeah dude the, the digest cast um yeah. we don't have any subjects for the digest cast yeah have you been working on anything like creative lately creative yeah i wish i had like something that i was creatively working on i think most of my time has been split up on on like some like a uh, stress stuff as i was saying before with like the taxes and the job and yeah. all that oh is this you yeah i've been making my card game dude. oh yeah dude oh, oh i recognize shit. this text yeah dude Damn. It's time to make my card game. <laughs> I'm not going to say much else, but I have been working on it, so. Oh, yeah. I got the paper ordered. I'm going to do some printing. Jesus. Yeah. I just have That's the magic cool. cards for I the know, comparison. I yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's cool, man. Yeah, I'm excited. I It already feels like magic is killing itself, so I don't really think I need to do that role. No. I was originally, my goal was, like, you know, in the 90s, killer. they have all the, yeah, the killer, the magic yeah, killer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. magic is doing such a great job of shooting itself in the foot. <laughs> did you hear about their 30th anniversary thing they Wasn't did? Wasn't it, like, like, 10 grand or something? Yeah, so it was $1,000 for four packs of 18 random cards. Yeah. So... Could be anything. Yeah, and they don't, uh, some, there was some speculation that they didn't even have rights to the art that they printed for those cards as well, which That's is cool. pretty funny, yeah. That's really cool. Uh, and you could only get it special ordered from them for $1,000. So you're thinking, like, it, hey, about 60, I mean, it's just not worth it. Yeah. It, yeah, it was such a stupid, g- greedy grab for money. They just want yeah. money. I mean, like, that's what they've been doing with, like, all the collaborations, dude. Mm-hmm. It's just, like, Walking Dead. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that, uh, honestly, it's something that bothers me so much because I feel like it was a game that I spent so much of my childhood invested in. Mm-hmm. And granted, you know, the guy who created the game, I was watching an interview with him just before you got here. He obviously didn't intend for the game to turn out like the way it has. Yeah. At least, and that's not to say that they didn't make good decisions along with the bad decisions. It's just that the bad decisions seem to overshadow the good decisions yeah. in these moments. So, but... uh no, uh, when I, so I guess I will speak a little bit. This game it has a different name from my original, uh, oh. game because it's different because the original game that I had created, I'll just call it L, uh-huh. um, was, uh, was basically just magic, but with cheaper cards. Yeah. And I had some effects in there, but they weren't really, uh, it was know, different. It had, yeah, it had differences, yeah. but it wasn't, it, it didn't have what I would consider like a gimmick to propel it forward enough to, you know, I, I, I wanted something that had more personality thematically. Yeah. And so I think this has a concept, uh, this new one, that uh, it, it's actually funny because it's so different from Magic that I've, I feel like I, I can't possibly be the Magic Killer because wow. it, it's so... Your it's its own, own thing. thing now. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's weird. It's uh, It I has saw. mechanics that are similar, but uh, I don't know. I'm excited. I'll get a prototype up and running soon. I'll have to read the cards more in detail yep. but I wanted to... Yeah, I'll talk a little Skimming. bit about it after the yeah, cast yeah, yeah. with you. But, uh, That's yeah. pretty sick. Yeah, I've been working on that, finally. I, honestly, I feel like I've, in a way, I there's things I want to do for Jump Off the Bridge as well. But um, I've, uh, I've just been putting this off for so long, too, that yeah. I just wanted to start it and get something going. As well as I, I miss being able to sit around a table and play card games with boys. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. the boys, rather. I kind of, I, I miss just, well, see, I, I'm kind of in the similar thing. Because, like, every time I get together with people, it's mostly, like, drinking and stuff, yeah. which is fine. Like, mm. I don't mind that, just hanging out, talking, and drinking. But at the same time, like, there are still some times where I'm like, I, I, I could go for a board game. Yeah, I, the, the problem uh, for me is, uh, I I think something that Magic filled for me was this investment for both ways. Because, like, with a board game, it, like... We're playing the game together, that's cool and everything, but it doesn't have that ability of expression as much as, like, building a unique deck and showing yeah. it off to friends does sort of thing. And I love the aspect of, like, putting in the time beforehand, building something stupid while, like, knowing your friends and, like, what they have in mind and stuff. Yeah. And almost, like, just... And then unleashing it at the table. And so, like, you also have multiple things to talk about. You don't, you have, like, the deck that you invested time into, you could catch up with people. Like, yeah. it, it could be both casual or competitive. Like, I really like that, those avenues of the game for me. So that's what I miss. When I used to do my, um, like, weekly tea club, we would have, like, three to four guys always come over and play, like, a game. Yeah. But the problem was is that, like, it ended up being more about, like, buying the most expensive cards than it was about just, you know, being able to use anything to our imagination and play it. Yeah. So, uh, so I definitely, I wanted, I felt like it was worth Especially after all post Covidian, like we are now uh-huh. timeline, <laughs> um, I feel like now people are like coming back together and stuff. So I want to like uh, facilitate working on something um, that works with that. Have you noticed that it kind of feels like it? It truly is like post. Like there's nothing remaining of COVID. Like I noticed so much, so many more like people. There's a lot more people like on the roads at places doing things like. Traffic has gotten much worse again. I'm like, damn, it's all over, isn't it? <laughs> Nobody's wor- working from home. Yeah, I like... think they, I think they try to keep the narrative up that there's things going, but I do feel like most people are just tired of it. Oh yeah, I'm sure in seven years they'll probably bring it back once everybody forgets about it. But at these moments, yeah, I just want to take advantage of it because I I think um, 
you know, I think we need more stuff in person, people playing together and doing stuff. Oh, yeah. And uh, I love the idea of, like, going to, like, a tournament shop or something, or, like, a card shop and playing a game yeah. that, like, I made and stuff like that. <laughs> so, I think that'll be rewarding. Yeah. Speaking of society. Yeah. Well, actually, I mean, like, do you have anything... You'd... No, I think, yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I'll talk know, about, just, yeah. Just, just in case. No, I appreciate it. I was thinking about society. Yeah, tell me about it. I, I was thinking about, uh, I was, me and, me and, me and the wife have been watching, uh, you ever heard of The Orville? No, I don't think I have. Okay, it's, uh, Seth MacFarlane made his own Star Trek. Okay. That one? I haven't heard of it, but okay. I, I understand the concept of what you're saying. Yeah, it's pretty good. If you like, like, Star Trek and junk like that, but this is, like, modern-ish, it's, it's a little bit funny. But at the same time, it's it's like Star Trek, right? Mm -hmm. You have, like, a, a thing that they're trying to show you, and that's it, right? And it gets resolved by the end of the episode. So, um, I was thinking about, like, the society of, like, Star Trek and stuff, where, like, pretty much everything is, like, dealt with. Like, you don't have to, like, trade or barter or anything, because everything's made in replicators or whatever, so they just print it out, and it's like, oh, yeah, there's there's your spaghetti and meatballs, or whatever mm -hmm. um you don't have to pay like medical bills you don't have to worry about like getting sick or whatever they have everything fixed and done so um i was thinking like we, how far away are we from that society could could we be living in that partially right now or no probably not because there's still materials to be mined out of the ground there's still problems to be solved so like um could you live in a society of uh rather than like working for money you just work for like a title could you do that yeah i think people need to always <clears throat> do something i don't i don't feel i feel like they would just die if they didn't do anything so but i mean like you do stuff that is to your that you you just enjoy doing mm -hmm. as well as it's productive yeah right so it's like i feel like at some point people maybe they don't necessarily need something they need something that they make up themselves yeah that, i think that's what i'm saying like they gotta find okay. their own purpose or i mean it's gotta be like i could work for a title in the sense that like you do something but i yeah. don't know as long as you're motivated to do it then i think that's that's all right i don't know it's an interesting concept i'm not really sure i i, I don't think i've spent enough time imagining a world that doesn't have the concept of supply and demand because i've for me it seems like there will always be a limitation yeah of something yeah i think because we've never seen it ever in our entire yeah. lives right but it's just like i was thinking about it I'm like i i really think that like if it was just like working for like a title you just kind of go like you don't even necessarily have to work really mm -hmm. but like i think the way that I feel whenever I'm like at work and stuff and I'm I'm the leader of like a few guys, I'm like that in itself, although stressful, is also rewarding. And I I think that the more stressful part of it is the fact that I have to worry about doing it enough to make sure I make enough money so that way I make sure that I'm able to continue living my life in the way that I want to. Mm -hmm. And so it's like I'm not even necessarily stressed out from managing people or doing stuff. It's 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 always just like, can I, how, is this sustainable enough for me, you know? So I, I don't know. I was just thinking about like, what if I didn't have to worry about money? Well, I would probably still work like an idiot. Mm -hmm. What am I, why? You know, what, what, is that just something that like, do most people think that way or do mo most people go like, well, once I have enough money, I'm just going to smoke meth and die. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have read a lot about uh, when people get all their uh, hierarchy of needs met that they just, they escalate into doing something else, basically. Yeah. Um, so I could see that. I mean, I don't think, do you feel like it uh, says something about you? Do you, do you feel like upon reflecting on that hypothetical situation that maybe you're, yeah, I don't know. You feel weird or you dislike yeah. that aspect of yourself or what? I just, no, I don't dislike it. Mm. I, I, I think I look at it and I'm like, I, if I worked for like charity and just like could do things that like, like if I enjoyed whatever I was doing and it was like for free, but like all my bills were paid and I had like s s things to do or whatever, I think that I could enjoy life just 
the same. Mm. I think I, I basically, I think money is bad. Maybe, maybe I'm becoming like some kind of weird <laughs> version of myself. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I can see that, uh, like, you know, in a lot of ways, I think we often measure ourselves and our self-worth by how much money we have. And that obscures the qualities of life and the things that we should be doing. Yeah. I think money has incredible metaphysical power to make your life better and other people's lives better and stuff like that. But I don't think it's necessary for survival. I don't know. <laughs> well, if you live down the woods or whatever. Right? Yeah. Can... I just, I mean, like, obviously we can live without money in many different ways. It's just a matter of you have to adapt your life and your expectations of life down to that. Yeah. I mean, I, and some people, that's all they know. Like, I'm sure Amish people, I'm sure they have a concept of money. Well, of course but they do. The concept of their life is different from our lives and what we've lived and yeah, our I mean, expectations are shaped based on that and what the media gives us. Yeah. But I mean, like, even then, like if I've, I've seen Amish people, I've talked to Amish people and like been to like uh, an Amish shop. Mm -hmm. Right. So, I mean, like I can, I can look at that and go like, oh yeah, that makes sense. They just don't have like phones and junk. But yeah. They, but they're not going to be like, like their conception of expectations of reality isn't the same. Like, like, they're going to be like, oh, I can make money and it's going to be easier to, like, get food for the winter or something. And we're like, oh, we got some extra money. I'm going to go buy, like, a fucking VR headset that I can use to play a digital board game with people <laughs> in a country that that you don't even know the name of. Yeah. And, and I'm going to I'm gonna pay for Duolingo in order to, like, I don't know, yeah. to speak to them. <laughs> like, that concept of expectations is different. Their reality is different, I would think. Yeah, but I mean, you could do that with anybody, I guess, yeah. right? I mean, even mine and yours reality, although we, we grew up in similar enough mm. situations or whatever, right? It's yeah. like, well, our perceptions of reality are probably different. Yeah, I, I guess I was just referencing that in the sense of like, um, I think money... Just in the sense of money. Yeah, in the yeah. power of money, you're, um, I guess... I think you can live without it in the sense that what you expect to be able to do with it is based on your perception. Yeah. I don't know. There's That's, some people yeah. that just spend money. Hmm. When shit. People buy magic cards. Yeah. Those fools. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So, you know, anyway. No, that's an interesting uh, thought experiment. I haven't thought about that hypothetical situation before. Did you feel like you learned anything about yourself from thinking about that? I guess that I learned that I don't I don't value money as much as uh, I value... I, I Or wait, I guess I don't value uh, the concept of money as much as I would value like the idea of just being able to live my life. I do think you hit on something important, which is something that we've talked about in previous casts as well, is that uh, this concept of often what we value, at least you and I seem to value, is our ability to service others yeah. rather than, you know, necessarily <laughs> anything else. Once again, I, I think, you, oh, you know what? You know what's crazy about that hmm. is that I think that a lot of people are like what what we've talked about. Right, where where like most people are like, I want to make other people happy. I think that there's a genetic default mm -hmm. installed in most people. But then there are like a few other people that are like the opposite, and they're like, no, no, no everybody needs to like just do stuff for me, mm -hmm. or I I just be completely selfish. And I think that people with like the I want to help other people with that default in their brain get uh beaten down by people that are the opposite that kind of makes them a little bit more shallow a little bit more like oh, i don't really think i should help people or maybe i only help select people yeah or whatever you know yeah I, I definitely see that i mean that that happens even with the media like um atomizing more people and making everyone be into these certain groups even though if you just talk to anyone you can probably reach like a common understanding relatively easily as long as you know they're not beset with some sort of inability to understand what you're trying to say. Yeah. So. Why do we have groups? 
I mean, groups are necessary in different ways, but I, I obviously you and I both value. It seems like the individual ideology the most. Yeah, I so. guess. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Obviously, like you know, it's, it, this this comes down to like political or sociological philosophy. I don't really know enough about it to say I'm I'm too dumb. I haven't read all the books yet. I don't know. Yeah. My my only take would be that you know it makes sense that groups are necessary to have like a society but the individuals of those groups are what should drive it not the majority yeah i i can completely see the other side of this or yeah. right i i guess is it's so like whenever somebody says like oh no you need to actually choose one because i guess if nobody ever chose one throughout like history of 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 the world Maybe we would be nowhere. Maybe everybody like, no, everybody's all right, man. Everybody's okay. Everybody's chill. Let's all just like think about it and sit back and relax. Whereas sometimes I, I do believe sometimes you, you just need to have an action. Hmm. You need to be like, no, 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 we're we're this group. We're gonna do this. Yeah, we're just gonna go. Yeah, I believe there needs to be some sort of underlying philosophy or worldview. But I think the society that you build should reflect and incentivize the cultivation of that worldview. I don't think our society incentivizes or cultivates uh, a positive worldview, or at least a worldview that aligns with the sentiments that I have. Yeah, whatever those are. I don't. I don't have any. Any. Uh. I, yeah. Yeah. I'm the same. Way. Yeah. I, I feel yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> I feel like I'm. I'm cultivating. Yeah. I don't know. My, whatever. I think the, our generation, or maybe even like previous generation, like. We've been exposed to so many different points of view, and I feel like this is the first time in human history that, like, a, a lot of people have been exposed to so many different points of view at all times, and people pointing at each other going, like, that one's wrong, and that one's right, no, this one's right, and that one's wrong, um, that, like, we have too, like, maybe too much information to actually sit down and go, like, there are right and wrong. I, I feel like more and more people that I talk to, they're like, no, there's maybe there's right and wrong, but I don't I don't think that all of them are all right or all wrong. <laughs> I almost said nothing there. Did you yeah, did you see the air like, coming almost, out of my mouth? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of confusing. Uh, no, I get what you're saying. I, I think I think people. Uh, well, you got a, you got a couple things there that I think are pretty interesting. This concept of information overload. I yeah. do think we live in a time, we live in a society, in a society. where uh, there is too much information. It's going yeah. in and out, one ear, out your butt, in your mouth, through That's your right. eyes. Penetration yeah. from every, all angles. Everything. Every angle. You're being yeah. spit roasted from every side, <laughs> uh, and it's overwhelming. And the um, the speed at which they penetrate is yeah. overwhelmingly fast. No lube. You, you could scroll up, you could scroll left, you can scroll right, you can scroll down. That's I'm, right. Soon enough, they're going to develop an app where you can scroll sideways <laughs> and diagonally. <laughs> <laughs> and in and out and forward and back i'm gonna be able to lick the screen and it's gonna be able to send me a different place than when i touch the screen that's right <laughs> yeah i'm gonna be able to smell and it's gonna be able to shoot smells into my body to make me better remember products and slogans <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to divulge and disseminate my uh, important <laughs> uh, McDonald's philosophy, uh, whatever that is. No, I think the information overload is something you mentioned. I do think that was something uh, that stuck with me when I had gone to a Salvation Army and I was talking with one of the uh, older women um, as we were looking at books. She said, yeah, something that I find really difficult is I just don't know what to read anymore because there's so much I want to read. Yeah. And uh, she was talking about essentially that concept of like mm -hmm. information overload and things like that. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's just more specifically. So like for me and you. Yeah. Right. Like our ideology, it doesn't align with like, uh, like political ideologies per se very directly. Like mm. Democrat, Republican, whatever. I feel like a long time ago, maybe not even that long ago, say like 80s, 70s, 60s, whatever, people just picked a side it's mm. it seemed that most people were just like i just agree with that because that's what i see and that's what i agree with and even then that might have been too much information for them and now we have so much information that i i feel as though more people are just indecisive and just not wanting to choose because i don't know what's right and wrong anymore i don't, I, I don't. yeah i almost think that comes from like a fluctuation of principles as well 
I think the school teaches a bunch of, I mean, if anything, one of the biggest criticisms I've heard levied that I've read uh, against the educational system as well as religious institutions is this concept of deferring to authority. Is that basically these institutions teach you to defer to authority rather than make your own decisions and be able to be decisive. Yeah. And I think that a lot of determination and the ability to be decisive comes down from your own successes within the world, but also like principles that you align yourself with. I think everybody has this aspect of like a professed religion or a professed identity or a professed political ideology. But then there's also the practical religion, the practical spirituality of what they live every day that guards and gates and decides their actions uh, beyond what they say they think they're doing. Um, So when it comes to like the indecisiveness, I think a lot of that comes from, you know, lack of in many ways, like self-esteem, but also they're not, in a way, we've robbed them of their di- their dignity. It seems like, at least from my experience in school, we've robbed people of the dignity to like be able to fail and then continue from that point. Yeah. Because, you know, everybody talks and fucking bemoans the idea of like the participation trophies. But if anything is like more pernicious than that, it's just this ability of like not allowing kids to fail with like the grading system to having a grading system where if you're feeling sick one day and you do bad on a test that reflects on you like an, for the rest of time yeah. rather than like being able to redo that test or have it be dynamic and like understand and account for like humans ability to like ebb and flow and like how that affects your performance. Like if every, if every single thing you do is like basically etched in stone, the second you do it, then that's not really going to cultivate this mentality that people are allowed to fail. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's, as I get older, I realize the value of failure and that it's not really like the end and that the concept of failure is really just uh, like a man-made principle. It's Mm -hmm. like, because if in the end, if you don't stop doing whatever you're doing, then you never really fail. You just continue to like work at it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's more natural than all these systems and what they promulgate, but man, dude, we were supposed to do a digestion cast. Now this is a thinking cast. I know. What are we doing? Mm. You want to go eat some Marbies? I'm going to eat marbles. I'm going to (laughs) eat glass marbles. I want to fucking choke on marbles. You ever, uh, you ever eaten, like try to eating a marble? No, I have not. I bet it would go down smooth though. Like caviar, except you couldn't bite into it. (laughs) I think you'd just choke probably. I doubt it. No? I think the human body is much more resilient than we give it credit for. I think that you'd feel the marble going down your throat and be like, no, 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 don't do, no, 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 don't do that. I bet I would eat the marble and I'd poop it out a day later. <laughs> and it would be intact the same way. You would hear a clank in the porcelain bowl as I shoot it out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just by itself. Yeah. Just like, ting. Yeah, tink. And so you'd be like, what are you doing in there? And then you hear like, tink, 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 tink. <laughs> It's marble. Nothing. It's marble madness. <laughs> no, that's that's the beginning yeah. of your marble age. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I read on 4chan that these guys have been doing a marble cleanse, and I just yeah, it's it's supposed to like basically what happens, you eat the marbles, and then like like six hours later you do this dance uh where you jump around you and you like, them, like grab your stomach, them. yeah. <laughs> and you like maracas, you try to like shake yourself as much as possible. And it, it gets in all the folds of the intestines and it cleans them out. Like if you imagine like in a washer and dryer, some people put those like hard plastic objects to make sure that it like hit. You're basically doing that. Except you have to be at the top of a hill. It has to be a 300 foot hill. That's and right. then you roll down it oh. as fast as you can uh, on your side. And then the marbles jostle around. And then when you get to the bottom, the marbles exit. You're good to go. Because you poop. <laughs> Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, and your intestines are clean, and you don't need to do coffee enemas. It's just a marble cleanse. You don't want to do a coffee enema? No. I think that... Why would they do coffee? Why wouldn't they just use classic water? I've read about it, but I don't remember. Is it because it's the caffeine going straight into your bloodstream? You're no, like, there's some effect to it. Uh, I don't remember what it is, though. Oh, whatever. There's a reason. I'm sure. There's always a reason. <laughs> It's, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, though, I wonder if these coffee companies are sponsoring these TikToks of people doing coffee enemas to get them to buy their coffee. Do like, you- oh, dude, I use Folgers, and man, <laughs> I have never seen so many worms come out of my butt after wow. doing Folgers. You think that they want the worms out? Yeah, well, duh, maybe, right? 
Wait a I second. I don't know. Wait a second. Yeah. I think big Starbucks wants you to keep the worms That's in. That's true. So they can feed you more sugar. Yeah, so then the, the worms are like fucking squealing with all the sugar they get. Yeah, they're like, like oh little, yeah, use a Starbucks Yeah, it's enema. like an infinite clapping of an audience of worms. It's squealing. <laughs> Man, my stomach's so happy. Yeah. It's clapping. Man, look at my stomach is doing happy dances. It's like the worms <laughs> fucking pressing against your... <laughs> you just see like little bulges that are <laughs> vaguely worm shaped. Uh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. I don't think it is. I think everything can be beautiful. I don't think so. I, I think you're living in your fantasy land where you have all this relativity... I, I think there are things that are definitely ugly and distasteful. I think that even, uh, you know, you can look at something that's ugly and be like, but that just means that I need to experience ugliness in order to see beauty. So there is an aspect of that there, but we can still identify it as ugly. Yeah. Not every ugly thing is beautiful. I can say that it's ugly, but then I can make it beautiful by going like, well, see, by looking at that, it is ugly, but that makes the other things much better. So... That beautiful. doesn't make the ugly thing beautiful. Sam. No, no, no. In a concept <laughs> way, if I look at that concept, I'm like, oh, that's a beautiful concept. I think what, yeah, you're, you're, what you're saying <laughs> is you can appreciate the 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 sight of things that are ugly I can, allows you to appreciate things that are beautiful more. Yeah, I, I can look at a loaf of bread that is blue, <laughs> that is gone moldy, and I can go like, damn, that's disgusting, and I want to throw up and throw this away. I, as soon as I throw this away... I need to wash my hands and hopefully not throw up. And not I can't breathe air. If I breathe the air while I'm touching the moldy bag, that is bad. Dude, you're silly. You gotta d- dip that in bacon grease and <laughs> take a hunk out of it. I need some penicillin. Yeah. Thinking, yeah. My boy's gonna experience so many demons tonight. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you, Jerry, do you have anything like that where you, like... Because, like, whenever I, I touch moldy food, that's the one where I, like, I grab it and like, <laughs> And like, I can't breathe. I used to be, be grossed out about it, but the more I read about it, the more I understand. And I feel like I eat enough things that cleanse that from my body that I'm not really worried about it that much. I gotcha. We, we like live in a... knack. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a society, man, where you can just do whatever and, like, minor illnesses don't really matter. I often think that uh, a lot of my fears are just, like, fears of ignorance, really. Probably. I think mine are just instilled from, like, a child. Like, I can't let, like, raw chicken breast touch my countertop. If I do, I have to, like, wipe it down. I think that it, it's literally just food. That is the only thing that I, I freak out about like that. As soon as a, a food is moldy or, like, something that's not supposed to touch my, my countertop, touch my counter, I'm like, nope, nope, nope. We've got to fix this right we now. we got to do an episode where we slap chicken breast against you. <laughs> oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Dude, if any of it gets in my mouth and I get salmonella, I'll die. Yeah. I think. You think? Yeah. <laughs> I've seen so many videos of people eat raw chicken from the supermarket aisle. I don't think it would be that big a deal. Oh. Yeah, okay, like I can stand people like eating their own poop and stuff like that, but as soon that as I seems see... way grosser to me than raw meat. Yeah, see this is where it's at though. You see the scale now? <laughs> I'm okay with that. Like, yeah. I'll live through that one. But as soon as I see someone, like, picking, eating a raw chicken breast, like, ugh. Well, if you think Jesus about it, one of the common vectors for parasites to spread is poop. So those are just the parasites in you that are like, yeah, poop's fine, but mold? <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> yeah, but I, I did the cleanse, man. Yeah. I should be okay. And now you gotta do it every fucking week, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I thought about buying another bottle of that, but, like, nothing happened the first time, so why would I do it again? Yeah, you can just try something different, like the turpentine and sugar. That might have an effect. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I want to eat the turpentine. I, I feel... I felt safe with the wormwood, you know? Yeah, you felt safe with the wormwood. <laughs> I'm okay with the wormwood. I'm not okay with the turpentine. I don't know. Maybe I'll try the turpentine at some point. Yeah, you you eat it and let me know how it goes, dude. Yeah, that uh, whatever is whatever. What is turpentine even used for? Nail polish remover? Uh, well, it's used. They have a synthetic turpentine that's used for removing paint and things like that. Yeah. But actual like hundred percent pine spirits turpentine is from a tree. I think it's like a tree resin or something. Damn, resin's cool. Or something. I don't know. It no. is resin. But... You ever touch resin? Yeah, I have. You ever, do you know that resin can stay the same temperature 
as like like if you had like a resin bracelet, it's hard, right? But like if you heat it up a little bit, it'll slide on easy, and then it'll kind of lock on and mold to whatever wherever you put it. Hmm. So you could use it. I thought about this. You could use it as like armor, like really cool moldable armor. It's obviously not flexible. But, like, if you put it on, like, non-bendy parts of your arms and legs, like, you'd have some pretty sick armor. Because res- resin's, resin's kind of good. I don't know how good it is against, like, I don't know, a bat, but it might be better than your arm. I don't know. I would imagine <laughs> it would shatter, but I suppose. You can get different. There's different kinds of resin. Why don't we do in the resin cast, bro? I'm ready. I, I'm, I Go buy wanna, some resin. I want to research resin, though. Yeah. I want to, like, find out. Go buy a bunch of the mixes, and then we'll fucking set up a table. I'll put a camera on, and then we can try smashing it with bats after we let them solve. (laughs) Well, you ever, like, you know, the 3D 3D resin printer? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's all I want. That's all I want to do. Honestly, why don't we do it? What's stopping you? You have money. You don't don't. value money. No, the IRS is taking it all. Oh, yeah, that's right. How much do you owe them? (laughs) If I told you, I'll tell you after the cast. Okay. Oh, no. (laughs) It's that big. It's too much. Uh, <laughs> I'm glad, uh, dude. I did my, I did that crypto stuff years ago. I sent them the thing for that, and I didn't have any trouble. So, well, see, uh, Bo Biden mm. uh, changed the laws on a, a like all of it, and so like it's not even crypto; it's regular stock. Yeah. Um, and he changed the laws, and like they suck now. Yeah. And so like even be even though I don't, I haven't taken profits. Um, if I just trade in the account, it shows as a profit, even though I lost it and I never, it never was in my possession. I guess it was, but wasn't, Mm. I don't know. It's kind of silly. That sounds silly. It sounds like it's just another way for the government to make fantasy money off of something that, you know, they can just tax for bullshit reasons. Are they going to give me money back for keeping it in the account, but losing the money? I don't think so. So then why would they take money? You know, it's fine. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to close our cast with? Um. Yeah, we shouldn't work anymore. Yeah, that's what you're on? Yeah, I'm just... Well, I think that you should work, but not for money. Okay. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that, that that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, wait, wait, wait. Um... <laughs> Before you hit the stop button, um, maybe next episode I'll change my mind. Okay. Maybe uh, maybe someone will, will make a, a a post about it. Yeah, maybe we'll get our first email. Yeah. Oh, at Roving Slant. Yeah, at, at gmail.com. G- G- <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I don't really like your anti-work ethic going on here. I like work. You spent the last... 20 podcasts talking about how much work you do day in day out you dream about work i i don't understand oh god uh leroy uh send in that email we'll see you then